Carolina this week with Tim McGinnis. Tim, how are you? Very good. Welcome. Thank you. The first time I flew into Myrtle Beach, I thought to myself, this is Myrtle Beach's airport. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to fly into Myrtle Beach's airport, I'd think, wow, this is Myrtle Beach's airport. That's exactly what we want people to think when they walk in the front door like you just did. Uh, what we hear a lot of, and understanding it's a brand new building, but we hear a lot of people as they walk in the front door, the first thing they do is they stop and they say, wow. And we're pleased by that because we really wanted a little bit of a wow factor in this building. We wanted the community to be proud of this building. We wanted to represent the community in the region well. And I think we did that. Okay. Well, show me around a little be bit. Be happy to. All right. So I guess this is one of the first places people will be seeing when they get to the airport. It is. When you walk in, the first thing you usually do if you're here to fly mm -hmm. is you'll go to the ticket counter. So mm -hmm. the ticket lobby is what is one of the more impressive things in this building, particularly compared to the old building. Uh, we love this, the space, the expansive nature of it. It's very open, it's airy. You can get lost in this building where it was hard not to find someone to run into in the other building. So this really improves the, uh, the total feel of the ticketing experience. It strikes me because it's really open compared to the old terminal. It is, it is, and that, that helps a great deal. We've got 40 foot ceilings in here and I think we had 12 foot ceilings or 14 foot ceilings in the other building. That helps a great deal. Um, one of the other things we did in this was we've learned something in the industry and that's uh, efficiency and, and economy of, of scale. So what we've done in this building is we've adopted a new business model and it's called common use mm -hmm. or shared use where we own the entire, the airport owns the entire IT backbone for mm -hmm. every system in this building and the airlines share our backbone but we operate it. So, so, what, so I imagine we're talking about the kiosks. The kiosks, everything from the kiosks to the ticket counters to the displays mm -hmm. behind the counters are off of our IT backbone. Mm -hmm. So when you walk up to a kiosk, you can mm -hmm. check into any airline at any kiosk at any time. It's through our system and it, it allows you to access the airline system, but it's not the airline system, it's ours. So though we're here at the US Air Desk or the Delta Desk, we can go and check in on Sprint. Correct. The Spirit, I'm sorry. Yeah, correct, <laughs> you can. You can check in on any airline at any kiosk at any time. Uh, you can't, you, you still have to go through the process of checking your bag at the proper ticket counter, but mm -hmm. to get your boarding pass, you can go anywhere in the, in the terminal building and use a kiosk, which is, adds to the efficiency and the efficient use of space and the effective use of space. This is a place that most people will never see. This is where your bags go. Uh, when you check in at the, you check your bags in at the ticket counter, the agent will take the bag and put it behind them on a conveyor belt. That conveyor system leads to a larger system that's called the, the inline baggage screening system. And this is a very, this is an unusual thing for an airport this size and a community this size, but in the time it takes you to get your baggage, to get your boarding pass and to move away from the ticket counter, your bag is theoretically already gone through screening and is out at the baggage makeup area. It takes about three minutes per bag to get it through the entire system. This is a $10.4 million system that, that we put into this building with the help of, of the Transportation Security Administration. You don't see this kind of automation in a building this size or in a community this size very often. So we're really pleased that it's here and it just adds to the efficiency again and that's really what this building is to us. It's a very efficient operation. So using this system compared, how did it used to work? It was all manual. Everything was manual. There was a, a small conveyor system that moved the bag from the counter to the back room. It stopped at that point. Everything else was manual. So they loaded it into the screening checkpoint, into the screening machine manually. They screened it, then they took it out, loaded it onto the, onto the baggage cart from there. There were five of those. Will and this make it more efficient so I'm less likely to lose my bag? In theory, that, that would be a benefit. I think really the benefit is it happens much faster, happens more accurately. The system is much more sophisticated than what we've had in the past in the old building. So it adds to the safety factor for, for the flyer as well. So this is the... This is where most travelers hate to be, going through this security. Is yeah, this is, this is the least favorite part of the building for any traveler, but it's a necessary evil, obviously. So mm -hmm. this is the checkpoint. Mm -hmm. After you've 
checked your bag, you've gotten your baggage, you've gotten your, your boarding pass, you come through here. And what you'll notice here is the dramatic difference again in the size and scope. There's not a lot of new technology here that wasn't in the other building. Mm -hmm. Much of what we have today is what was already in the building. We were very technologically advanced at that point. Anyway, mm -hmm. so much of what we have was already moved. What we did gain was a great deal of queuing space, much more comfortable environment for the passenger in particular, yeah. and the flow is just so much easier that it actually goes much smoother than it did in the old building, which is a great thing, particularly when you're looking at what is typically the most inconvenient, uncomfortable part of the terminal. Mm -hmm. Any other changes as far as security goes between the old terminal and the new terminal? Or no, really. Nothing the, really that I'm going to notice, I no, imagine, No, nothing through. that yeah. you'll notice. Uh, we've yeah. all, we had already upgraded to the latest uh, full body scanners. Mm -hmm. They are the cartoon version, not the, not the personal version. Most of those are gone, mm -hmm. have gone away. We have the latest and greatest. The very technologically advanced TSA recognizes the need for that in every market. And we're pleased that, they, that we're one of the markets that they've early on put those systems in. Now I know this is being that the the money that paid for this airport, which is mm -hmm. to the tune of about 180, 180, 180 90, 118? 118. 118 million dollars. Mm -hmm. That this uh, this doesn't only come from local sources, but you do get a chunk of this from the federal government as well. There's grant money in this building, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, TSA gave us much of the grant money for the baggage screening system. Uh, that was a great find on the part of TSA to help us. Uh, there are some Federal Aviation Administration grants in the public areas of this building as well, but the predominant funding mechanism that was used for this building were revenue bonds that are generated by the activities on this airport. We never put a tax dollar into this into this terminal building. So the county council never allocated money to this building. Uh, no general fund dollars, no tax proceeds went to this building at all. It's user fee based. It is based on what activities we generate in the building. So this is an, almost a testament to tourism. It is, it is. It's a, it's a testament to tourism, and it really highlights the different nature of an airport. Even though we are a public entity, much of what we do kind of mirrors the private sector. Mm -hmm. we, make, we make money, and we use that money to continue to develop our facilities and to improve our services here. Um, so we're more in a business environment. It's kind of a quasi-business rather mm -hmm. than, uh, than a strict government environment. It's a blend. Gotcha. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a look at what it actually looks like when you go to get on your plane to fly out of this new terminal here at Myrtle Beach International Airport. So where are we now, Mike? We are in an area where you reassemble all of your personal effects after you've gone through the checkpoint. And one of the things you need to notice about this is that this is an area, this is a point of decision. Now the old building will reopen probably in about 18 months and it will be a concourse. We'll still have six gates there. So some of the airlines will be operating out of that building. Others will be operating out of concourse A, which is the new concourse. So at this point you make a decision to go right to concourse A or to concourse B or left to concourse A. So th we call this a point of decision. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll figure out where you are based on you do this the signs. This signage. Okay. And you know, we're, we're really kind of proud of the signage in this mm -hmm. building. It was done locally by Tyson Signs. They did a great job, phenomenal job mm -hmm. for us. The, the design and the quality of the signs has already gotten rave reviews in the community and we're just pleased that people can find their way around. And a lot of the work here in the airport altogether was done locally. This about, wasn't something that was shipped out. No, about 70% of the money that we spent on this yeah. building was done either by local contractors or by state, by contractors from within the state of South Carolina. All right, where are we going now? We're going to go upstairs, go into the concourse area. Okay. As we get up here, one of the things you'll notice is that we put lots of windows in this. One of the things that I've always loved about airports is the view. Mm -hmm. Being an airport, an airplane geek, I love the view, <laughs> but it's amazing how many people do. Uh -huh. And I talked earlier with you about the colors of the building and our oh, desire wow. to make it feel like Myrtle Beach. Uh -huh. This is probably one of the best places to see that. We've added a little feature here with beach chairs, the ladder on deck chairs, and it's chair amazing too. how popular they are. They add a little splash of color. Uh, 
the tile is to represent the sand on the beach. Mm -hmm. We've got some blues for the sky. We've got a little bit of everything. And if you think of Myrtle Beach and you think of the environment that we live in, mm -hmm. we think the colors in this building represent it quite well. Wow. Yeah. How, who, who did a lot of the design work on this, just out of curiosity? I mean, it's just, it is kind of architecturally cool. <laughs> it is, it is. There were, the architectural team was a company out of Charlotte mm -hmm. named LS3P and a company out, out of New York named Giuliani and Associates. Mm -hmm. Very neat. Yeah. yeah, and they really, ca I think they captured the essence of Myrtle Beach pretty well here. So you could sit here and you could watch the planes come in? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Or you go over here and you've got to the Cantina Maxima. <laughs> <laughs> That's an important feature of the building, yeah. definitely. This is pretty interesting right here. It is. Um, this is this is kind of a little piece of artwork, really, when you look at it. But it blends art with something for children to do. This is a family destination. Mm -hmm. We see kids in in here all the time. And we didn't want to just do the typical kids' play area. So we we searched and we found a husband and wife artist team in Mississippi that build what they call lighting benches. And what it is, is it's a, it's a bench that changes color as you run your hand across <laughs> it. And you can make, the kids can play with it and oh, just wow. you know, make all different kinds of patterns. And it's, it's something for children to do. We actually have a lot of adults <laughs> that enjoy it as well. Oh yeah. And then above it are touch panels uh -huh. and they change colors based on body temperature. So you can put your hand on it, and it will change color. Oh, that's so kids can play with that as well. They can make. That's that's neat. Yeah, they can make <laughs> shapes. They can do just some fun things with it. It helps them pass the time. Helps it the parents helps the stay parents sane well. passing the time. Yeah. Okay. You know, airports have a have often have a very sterile feel to them. Mm -hmm. We tried to make this as unsterile as you can, right. if that makes sense. Sure. We don't want people to be uncomfortable here. We want them to feel like they're still in Myrtle Beach. Mm -hmm. you know, we check out of a hotel, and our, after you check out of a hotel, the average dwell time in this building is 90 minutes. So you're here for 90 minutes before your flight leaves. The last thing you want to do is sit in the gate area and have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. So we tried to create the feel of Myrtle Beach so that you feel like you're still on vacation even though you've checked out of your hotel and you're waiting for your airplane to go home. And you're not, you're not stuck in a different era like you were in the old terminal. Kind of like when you fly, you know, you fly to the Charlotte's airport or you fly to Atlanta's airport when mm -hmm. you're making your connection. It's just night and day over what the old terminal was now. It's I think true. in some regards, you're going to be more impressed with Myrtle Beach's <laughs> terminal than you are the other terminals. A lot of that is due to its newness and sure. you know the, a few of the features that we have that they don't have mm -hmm. because of the age of their, their infrastructure. Mm -hmm. But I think we're, we're gaining that world-class feel in this building where in the old building it was very utilitarian functioned well for what it was supposed to function as, but for the future growth of this airport and our ability to put heads in beds, which is one of our prime missions here, um, I think this building gives us a lot more flexibility than we've ever had in, that, in the old building. We were just talking about wanting to make the environment, make you feel like you're still in Myrtle Beach after you've left your hotel and before you're going home. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, 90, 90 minutes is what people wait here. Mm -hmm. So we looked around and we worked with our concession operation, MSE, to find something that would represent Myrtle Beach. And what we found was Nacho Hippo. Uh, it is a local operation, Divine Dining owns it, and this is, this is one of the franchise operations for Nacho Hippo. The other is in Market Common. Very, very popular in Market Common. We're pleased that they came here, and, it's still re and it truly does represent Myrtle Beach. I want to go take a look at this other restaurant you have. Ah, yes. I think some of the best french fries in the world come from Steak and Shake, and I have never seen a Steak and Shake in an airport before. It's because there's never been one in an airport before, Tim. This is the very first Steak and Shake in any airport in the country. And you and I, being from the central Illinois area, know Steak and Shake well, but it's very, very popular here as well, in North Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. in particular. That's where they that's where they have their other operation. But we're pleased to have it here, and this is probably one of the busiest vending operations in the building today. I think when you go to a lot of airports, and I talk about the big airports like Charlotte and Atlanta, and you see the different restaurants they mm -hmm. have, a lot of the offerings are always the same. You see the same 
you know, very Sabaro, true. Subway, this, that, and the other thing. But here, things are a little more like more unique. Like you say, you're going for that local. We flavor. tried very hard to to bring that local flavor into the into our concession operations. Mm -hmm. You're right. Lots of airports have lots of the same stuff, and we mm -hmm. didn't want that. If you're going to represent a community in a region like we wanted to, we felt it was important that we have concessions that do that as well. So they add to that to our success in that effort. Okay. Well, I know that all of this kind of leads to the question, is a better airport going to mean more people flying into and out of Myrtle Beach? Is it going to mean more airlines are going to come here? When we come back, I want to talk a little bit about the business of the new airport. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Carolina this week. This week we are at the Myrtle Beach International Airport talking with Mike LaPierre. Right now we're in the gate area and this is where so many people spend so much of their time when they're traveling and you've done some unique things in the gate area. We have. We tried to we tried to make this comfortable. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's open, it's airy, lots of natural light, which adds to the comfort level. People feel much more comfortable in that kind of an mm -hmm. environment. We've added lighting benches for the kids to play in in every gate area. Mm -hmm. We've added some charging tables so that with, with high top chairs so that there are places to actually do work and people do a lot of work sure. when they're traveling. But one of the unique features is the chair arrangements that we've used. We did a great deal of research and we found that the way you organize your chairs has a lot to do with the with how much usefulness you get out of them. <laughs> Typically when you line chairs up in a row, you'll get about a 50% utilization rate, which means you have to buy more chairs because they people by nature want to want to have a space in between mm -hmm. them and someone they don't mm -hmm. know. We've got a we've got some of that, but we've we've added in some triangular shapes where we have two chairs and on four different sides and there's a table in between and it it allows you to have a lot of personal space but and not be right next to someone but be close enough so that if you're traveling with with your loved one or with a family member or a business associate mm -hmm. you're not right next to them but you're in a place where you can talk easily. That arrangement gets 80% utilization. So we're able to buy fewer chairs, get more utilization out of them, and it goes back again to the efficiency of the building and the efficiency of the things that we did in this building to make it more useful. Very neat. Now you're gonna show me Brook Green Gardens. I will. So this is gonna be the first thing that most people see once they uh, get off the plane, get it through is. the gate. Here we are. This is where you're going to meet your loved ones. Okay. This is the the um, area where security ends and you can greet your loved ones in a non-secure environment. We wanted this to be a welcoming environment. Not so much for the passengers, although we accomplished that as well, mm -hmm. but for people waiting. So there's a full service restaurant mm -hmm. immediately adjacent to it, so you don't have to stand in the middle and just wait for hours waiting for someone. You can go sit down and have, have a full meal if you'd like. Um, but we also added a little touch of, of beauty as well. And we worked we were closely with our partners at Brook Green Gardens, and they came up with a design for the landscaping and the sculptures they put in this building are magnificent. And those sculptures look a little bit like the ones I've seen out of Brook Green Gardens when I've been there before, the kids mm -hmm. and the, yeah. They are, they are. And the folks at Brook Green picked the sculptures out. They came out, they looked at the building, they did the design for the landscaping. They picked the sculptures out specifically for this building, and I think they just hit a home run. So they get to promote themselves, and you get this great aesthetic in your airport. Exactly. And again, it adds, it adds back to that feel of we wanted to represent Bloomington or represent Myrtle Beach mm -hmm. in the Grand Strand area. Mm -hmm. So I think we've accomplished that. Brook Green Gardens being what it is, is one of the preeminent locations you want to go when you're in, in Myrtle Beach. We brought them here, and that's just a that's just a phenomenal addition. Last to questions for you: Do you hope that this is going to mean that we're going to see more air service to Myrtle Beach and more people coming to the beach okay. by air? You don't build a building to attract air service. Air service is attracted by demand. We think that when the demand is there, and it certainly is here, mm -hmm. and we want to grow the brand so that we bring more people through this airport to help the effort to bring more visitors to the Grand Strand area. We'll be able to accommodate them better. The building itself won't bring new service, but it will allow us to be more active in our air service development and be much more of a partner down the road 
with others in the, in the tourist industry mm -hmm. to bring people here to enjoy what we have to offer in Myrtle Beach. And just because I'm always looking at my family's bottom line, is this, it going to mean that it's going to cost more for me to fly out of Myrtle Beach that no. we have this nice new airport? No. Um, first of all, the airlines pay for the operations and maintenance of a portion of this airport, a good portion of it. but. That's only 3% of the ticket price. Remember that we are paying for this through user fees. The airlines are ne never will pay for any of the capital investment in this building. That was something the county council decided long before I even came here. And it's a great decision. Uh, the airlines will not pay for capital in this building. So this building doesn't cost the airlines any more to operate than it would in the other building. There's more square footage, so the bill's a little higher, but that's not because of the investment in capital. It's simply because there's more to maintain. Mike, thanks for giving me the tour this morning. Really impressive space here. Thank you. It's my pleasure, Tim. Thanks a lot.